This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Drive out of the car! With your host, Mark Martinez. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. And the English professor. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the dumpster, Drosy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. And welcome back to another Can Crushers. We are on location again in Pittsburgh. Just came back from an IWC event. I am here with the English professor because he's my ride or die. What's up? Hey, yeah, so we went to IWC Reloaded last night with the reset button. By the the way, this concept is my favorite event that IWC has. We'll get into the show, but favorite concept. I love the whole idea. Yeah, uh, with Royal Rumble coming up, you know, that's one of their big, the WWE's big four, and that that's your favorite? That or Survivor Series? I know are like 1A and Rumble. 1B. Yeah, Rumble's first. Okay. Yeah. Probably for me, too. I always enjoy a good Battle Royal type match. Um, but for IWC, this is uh, my favorite event as well. Yeah, the, the concept is fun. Um, you never know what you're going to get. So, in, yeah, this is my favorite event for, that, that they do. In last year, they added their own type of Royal Rumble and do it with the reset button. We didn't get to see it last year because we had a wedding to go to. Yeah. But we did see it this year, and I, again, we'll get there. But we have some we have some stuff that we need to talk about that happened right after we recorded last week that we just need to, breaking news kind of type of thing. Yeah, we touched on it on our Facebook page a little bit, but uh, we haven't talked about it um, on our show. Um, so, namely, two things. One is um, allegations against Tessa Blanchard. And before we get to that, uh, more importantly than that, the passing of uh, the Soul Man, the original rock, Rocky Johnson. Kind of came as a surprise to me. It, it really did. And, John, after we came back from wrestling last night, um, I'm still a night owl. I really am. Night owls, that wouldn't work for whatever. Um, I think night owl are people who are awake at night i was awake, i was night. awake yeah. more than you were after okay, we got yeah, back fair enough so i was scrolling and i finally came across the the post that the rock put on about his dad and i i made sure i put that up on facebook today it's it's touching you know i, I had some tears it, it really is it's Go on to Facebook and read it. It's unbelievable. Yeah, there were some nice tributes, not just from his son, but from Ric Flair, from Vince McMahon, and, and others. Um, Ric Flair's is one that stuck with me. Ric Flair doesn't like to use the word great, and he didn't no. hesitate to put the word great in all caps, and he said uh, Rocky Johnson's conditioning was second to none. I, I would believe it. The guy was uh, he was built like a rock. He was aptly named. Yeah. We reached out to Rocky a few months back, and with his book that was going to come out, he was going to come on Can Crushers once it came out. We were going to talk about the book, this, that, and the other. Um, he's had, he had some issues with the book. They pulled it back off. Uh, the promoter of the book is kind of a little weaselly. We'll leave that for you guys to find out, just to know that that's all on. So Rocky was going to come on in about the beginning of April, and I'm really upset about that. But it's life. I, I don't mean to say it like that. It is life that life is more important again than the podcast. So yeah. we're, we're we're definitely saying uh, to Rock and his family, the Usos and everybody, you know, we're with you. We love you. Yeah, it, we're bummed that we never got a chance to have him on the show. Um, had to have been a thrill for you though, Mark, to at least converse with him a little bit. Yeah, it was that, great. That must have been pretty cool. Um, I was excited about the book, and I, I really was. It was it was pretty cool. Did you ever get to see him live? Did you ever I get to see didn't, him? Didn't you know where he was going to be? He was going to be at the main event, the big event. Uh, the big event, really? Yeah, I, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I we would have saw him there yeah. again, but I saw him probably. He was a staple um, on the house show circuit in New York back in the day. I saw him a handful of times. Before WrestleMania 1? Before, yeah. All of it before, yeah. Uh, which I attended. 
But anyway, um, in fact, the card just before that, he was one of the Lumberjacks for Tito Santana versus Greg the Hammer Valentine. He had a match earlier in the night against Enhancement Talent. I want to say like Terry Gibbs or Charlie Fulton or something like that. Um, but in 83, 84, I saw him against uh, the Samoans, all three of them. He teamed up with Putsky and Tito Santana. They lost a two out of three. And then I saw him, I think, against Greg the Hammer Valentine. He beat Greg Valentine. So it was fun. He, he, he was very athletic. He was so smooth in the ring. His sunset flip, his drop kick were like, they were like liquid. They were like silk. He was so fluid in the ring. Him and Tony Atlas. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, wasn't those, it? Those were great. You can go back and watch any of those matches on YouTube or the network or something. Yeah, uh, one of the best, for sure. Yeah. One of the best. Yep. We're sorry, uh, we're sorry to see him go. Let's transition over to the Tessa before we get to IWC last night. And you've read it. We've been posting it. Um, I want you to start with this. What, what do you think? I don't know what to make of this because one side is so adamant that she said what they say she said. And she's so adamant that she never said it. Um, you know, I, I don't believe in the sins of the father or whatever. Um, there were similar al allegations against Tully Blanchard, I guess, years ago, which he denied. So, um, and I don't know her whole story. I mean, you know, how, how long she lived with Tully growing up or whatever. That's none of our business. Um, I just found it interesting that there were similar allegations way back when that he denied. I don't want to believe this. Um, I don't either. I, that's, let me jump right in there. I, yeah. I don't either. I really don't. Go ahead. Yeah, but just that maybe, you know, Chad says that, that perhaps it's a work. I don't know. That's um, It's cross promotions, yeah. so it, it's not. I don't, I, I, I don't think it is either. I don't think it is either. There are too many women coming out from different promotions to make this, you know, a wrestling angle. Um, I don't know. I, I wasn't there. I'm not going to say she did or didn't because I have no idea. I hope she didn't. Mark, you and I were big fans of hers for I'm the first still, time. I, I'm still going to be a big fan. Right. I'm, listen, I'm a big fan of uh, Jose Canseco still. I loved watching him wow. crush baseballs. Yeah. You know, he did steroids. He's a crazy-ass man. Yeah. His baseball, I love him playing baseball. Okay? Um, this is a personal thing with Tessa. It really is. If it happened, I will still, you know, this might get me heat. I will still love what she does in the ring. You tell me she's not one of the greatest women athletes out there right now, and I'll say, prove me wrong. Why? Can you separate them? That's tough. That No, that's a, that's a fair question. It's a tough question. Yeah, I, and I think you can. Um, while this is a delicate issue, I think you can separate the two things. Um, again, we don't know what she did or yeah, didn't I, do. We weren't there. But I if was she not did, in Japan that weekend. Yeah, I wasn't either. The following uh, weekend, though. Oh, uh, I mean, you believe. could have been there. Wow. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who knows? Can you separate the two? I think you can. I think you can separate someone's work from their sins, from their personal beliefs. Can't reiterate this enough. We don't know what she said. We don't know what she did. We all have it, skeletons in our closet. We do. we do. But in general, anyone's work for the most part, can be separated from their beliefs and things they've done, wrong things they've done. When we saw her the first time, we thought it was cool. We recognized the name Blanchard. Um, she we wasn't... We were both gaga. Stop. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, we were. She wasn't as jacked as she is now. She is in incredible shape. She was immediately the highlight, one of the highlights of that card. I mean, the highlight of that card probably was the Rock and Roll Express just because... Right. You know, we, we rewound the clock 30 years, and they were still great in the ring. But she was very, very good on that card, and we knew right away, you know, keep this an eye on her. This got it. Yeah, she's got it, and she's going places. And then she's, she's personable, because that night she was excited to know where we came from, this, that, and the other. And then we saw her again at another big event, like, three, four months later, and she, rem she remembered us, yeah. for the love of God. And the funny thing is, is... Mark and I tried to divide and conquer at this other event where, you know, we switch stuff. You go see this guy or this girl and get their autographs and uh, you give me what you want and I'll go see the other person. Um, 
but we both, we didn't realize, we both went to see Tessa individually. And when I saw her, she looked at me, knew she had seen me somewhere, and then actually said, oh yeah, your friend was just here. I, I mean, guys, she sees thousands of people, um, and she remembered uh, a couple of schmucks that were big fans of hers. So in that regard, I, I think she's a cool person. She's a good wrestler. She's a good performer. She's only getting better as far as like mic skills, psychology, all that stuff we don't understand. Um, I, I just hope this is a misunderstanding. I really do. Melsler's put out that it, that's why she didn't get signed by WWE when she had her NXT tryout, that she's got a bad attitude. It, do you put her work ethic as a bad attitude because she wants to be number one. She, she right. I don't want to say she's going to step on people, you know, to get to where she wants to go. Because, guys, come on, it's cooperative. But it is, Mark, but part of the allegations against her that she steps on people to get to where she wants to go. There are people coming out saying she blackballed them. Like, you know, again, I don't know the specifics, but what it sounded like to me was if she works tonight, I leave. Kind of thing. Do you know what yeah. I mean? No, I no, getting no. someone. I'm uh, stirring the pot. I yeah, clearly that's what you do. Uh, getting someone kicked off a show. You know, she's good enough on her own merits to not have to go that route. And I, and I hope, I hope she didn't. I really hope she didn't. I hope this is a misunderstanding. Um, Allison K kind of came out. Well, no, not kind of. Allison K came Chelsea out balls Green. to the wall. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, Allison K keeps coming out daily, by yeah. the way. Uh, all right, real you quick. You know how I feel about Allison K. You love her. I do. Uh, real quick, and then we'll we'll move on. Um, TNA, or Impact, or whatever they're calling each other this week, uh, still decides to put the heavyweight championship on her. Right move. Quickly. Yes, absolutely the right move. It's hot right now. There's no such thing as um, whatever you want to call it. Bad publicity. It's pro wrestling. It's going to generate interest. Um, yeah, it's the right move. You've already touched on it on Facebook as well. Booker T thinks this is a ridiculous idea. Uh, Booker T. Because, Go ahead. because now if she doesn't beat everybody on the roster, it ruins the roster. I don't agree with Can that. Can we get into the twenty second century or whatever century we're, we're 21st. in? Twenty first. Yeah. Yeah. We got a ways to go to the twenty second century. Close uh, enough. I'm close ready enough. to move though. Wow. You're a man of the future. Right. You're like that uh, Bill Watts' kid, the Techno Team 2000 guy. Oh, my yeah. God. Um, the new breed is what they were called. Is that what they were called? Yeah, yeah. look it okay. up. All right. Anyway, well, what in the world were we just discussing? Oh, that she can't compete with other guys. Yeah. Booker T, I mean, you know, I said it. I commented on Facebook. Maybe this is why WWE creative is behind everybody else. Maybe this is why... Uh, I don't know. Of course they can compete with the guys. It's, it's entertainment. Mad. Right. We saw it last night, even though it only lasted, we'll get to it, but in that battle royal, even though it only lasted a, a minute, we still saw believable man versus woman competition. Ronda Rousey beat up Triple H at WrestleMania. Come on, Booker. Yeah, get with it. All right, let's transition as we're hitting the reset button on the show right now to get to IWC. Uh, Pre-show. Culmination against Anthony Young, Vic Braun, and Miles. Uh, Atticus leaves right off the bat. After they all beat the hell out of the, the three youngsters. Right. Because they had just graduated. Atticus leaves. So you're thinking, wow, uh, why is he leaving? Maybe I Remy is the leader, right? Re I, Remy was the leader, but I think the reins have been taken from him. So you think Atticus is not? I, yeah. And then with with his brother being back, Otis, he's the strength, right? Yeah. yeah. So he's a good dude. Yeah. do you think Remy is now down to three? I think Remy is like the uh, yeah he, he's he's a soldier at this point. Yeah, he he's probably third on the list. Yeah. And he, I would say Otis is like the... He's the muscle. The, yeah. The mechanic. The underboss. The, yeah. Things together. Yeah. Um, we'll get to that. Uh, culmination, just destroy the youngsters. They do, but there was... Um, I like 
Young, which is Anthony, Anthony Young. Young. I liked him. He's got a great look. Um, reminds me a little bit his physique uh, of Starks from the NWA. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Ricky I, Starks. Ricky Starks. I like. I liked Young, and the the one dude that was throwing those clotheslines. Those looked Big awesome. Braun. Braun threw great clotheslines, great headbutts, and I thought finally clotheslines are back in pro wrestling. This guy was decking his opponents with clotheslines and headbutts. Just some good old fashioned stiff shots. I like this match. Um, I like what the uh, recent graduates did. I, I, that's pretty impressive that IWC is training these kids and putting them out there, and they're coming out and 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 doing some good work right away. Some of the best in the territory, meaning Pennsylvania, if you want to call it that, have come out of the IWC of schooling. I mean, let's not name names in order because, God, I'm sure I'll get some type of tweet or something later on. Maybe we'll go alphabetically. How about that? All right. So Calvin's great. Elijah Dean's great. Yeah. Johnny's great. Johnny Patch Patch. is awesome. I mean, now you have these youngsters now. I mean, I, I again, it, it, it's just, they're turning out, this is going to sound like it's a machine, but they're turning out good product. You know, Absolutely. as a wrestler, you're a product. You have to sell yourself. Yep. And you're doing great jobs. Absolutely. They, they were very good. This was a fun introductory match. It got the culmination over, which is you'll see during the course of the night, they are the new faction. You know, now that, Team Storm's not together anymore. Um, but there's see- another one. There, There's actually two. It, we'll get there. You're trying okay. to leak everything. I'm You're not try- trying to leak anything. I'm just saying I like these guys. The only thing I will say about the culmination, their promos were so cool and they were so much fun. And I said to you and Soup, we need more from these guys. We need the dirt and grime to come back. We need blood. Um... Their music is is gothic and scary. That yeah. look needs to match it because when you take everything off and Otis, I'm sorry, Mark. This is Mark saying that. Obviously, I'm John. I'm saying this, but Mark said this last night. Um, he kind of just looked like a mechanic. I I I, I led with that. Yeah, you, you hinted at it. Right. I'm going to come out and say it. Uh, he kind of looked like a mechanic. So yeah. the, the gothic thing is lost once the bell rings. I need to see more of it. I need to see Remy with the black smudge on his face again. I miss that. We need scary stuff. Yep, the mask the, the mass that Otis is... Not Otis. Uh, Atticus right. plays this the best because at least he's got, he's got the nose ring and he's got right. the grill and he just looks freaky, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um... The rest, yeah, have they, dark jeans on and gray shirts. Out. Let me say this: they need to be more, uh, more of a social outcast. Dirty, dirty. Uh, teenage dirtbags. Teenage dirtbags. Like right. Well, no, right now they look like teenage dirtbags. Right now they look like they could get seated at Eaton Park. I want them to look like the manager at Eaton Park wouldn't let them in the restaurant. How about Benny Hanna's? Can they go there? And- <laughs> No, if they can't get an Eaton Park, then I gotta get into Benny Hanna's. All right, I, I want them to look like they can't get into an Eaton Park. Okay, all right, that's that's your homework for February twenty second. But good match, guys. Good match. Yeah. All right, so Plumber comes out. Hey, what's up? You know this and that. Uh, upset that Jenny wasn't in the ring with him already, but you know Plumber, it's Plumber. We love him. We do love him. Uh, first match of the night is Johnny Patch against the Reset Button, and the Reset Button. Picks Jonathan Gresham. On paper, this is an amazing match. Nothing's... You are already pumped because he's got an octopus on his head now. I love it. It makes sense. He is the octopus. He does the octopus hold from that old PlayStation wrestling game. Um, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, but the Commandant on that game. Yeah. I used to love that game. Uh, he does the octopus hold, which is devastating, but not just that. You know, he's got all the joint manipulation submission holds, and he came out wearing an octopus mask with tentacles that hung down to his tentacles. And the ROH Tag Team Championship as well. That was awesome. Yeah, we got somebody from another promotion. So, great match. Great. Great match. Do not hesitate to say it. 20-minute time limit, and 
it was a great match. Yeah. But let me say this. It went the 20-minute time limit. It was a draw. I'm excited for this match. With what else you had, I, I don't think you start your pay-per-view with a draw. I got lost after... They're not lost, but I upset a little bit. Because this match could have been right before the the break. Yeah. It's second or third match. It would have made sense. I'm just... I'm upset that this was the first match. I, if... Because it was... It was so good. I, it was the best match of the night. Yeah, two things I want to... Three things. I think maybe Justin's idea was to come out with a bang. Hit him with the good stuff. Bang, early. bang? Like yeah. Mick Foley? Just a bang. Oh. Not two bangs. Oh. Um, come out with the good stuff first. Uh, in that regard, mission accomplished. Right. Uh, the other thing, number two, is um, I said to you, Mark, this is going to be hard to follow. This is going to be so good, it's going to be hard to follow. And number three, I've said this before, um... Johnny Patch, um, I said this to you last night, he's only getting better. Oh, yeah. He's only getting better. Um, whether his tongue was really hanging out at the end of the match or that was part of the performance, it was believable. He gave the impression that he was in there with a better wrestler um, but was just more determined, was grittier, was not going to get pinned, was not going to submit, was going to just keep fighting um, and be the, the daredevil that he is. Um, and that his opponent, the octopus, is still, in my mind, the single best pound-for-pound pound wrestler anywhere in the world. Pound-for-pound, pound, uh, I've seen him on ROH. Again, Like I, I don't study ROH. I watch it when we can find it on the TV and everything. But since the last time that Gresham has been at IWC, he's thickened up. Yeah, he's got he's some muscle. Bulk. Yeah. Yep. Still just as smooth though. Oh yeah. He looks great. And and seeing him um on ROH, he has a little bit more of a voice there. He does. And I like what he does there. This guy is the best. He's probably my favorite wrestler right now. Nice. Nice. All right, let's transition to the next match. It's gonna be the tag team title match as the regulators are defending against the reset button. Right. And first Resetter is Bulk Nasty. And did you feel it right off the bat then? Yeah, because you already had fans chanting steak and egg, steak and egg, steak and egg is what the fans wanted. So did we encourage the reset button to get Xander out there? Yeah, well, no, because the reset button, as you know, has a mind of its own. It does. That's what, who was it, Justin or one of the people on the announced team said it's got a mind of its own. So, I don't know. It's been created, and now it's taken on its, a, own, its own life, life form. Yeah. And so, we can't control it. No one can control it. But, um, I don't know. Maybe it hurt us. And thought, I think oh, it hurt I'll us. give the humans what they want. Yeah. Yeah. So, steak and eggs, as you heard Wednesday on the spotlight, Bulk Nasty is not a tag team wrestler. Yeah. Well, guess what? He's now the tag team champion, so... He is a tag team wrestler. Yeah. Steak and eggs going forward are now part of an elite group in IWC as champions joining the fraternity, joining locked and loaded main event, down and dirty, whatever you're going to call them. Oh, uh, joining Big League, joining the Midnight Express. I mean, come on. Yeah. 2004, the Midnight Express held the IWC championship. I did not. Which version? The IWC champion. Yeah, which Midnight Express, I'm saying. Oh! Condry and Eaton. Ah, uh, okay. The IWC version of the IWC Tag Team Championship. Right, those uh, ones. All right. So, Steak and Eggs now in the history book. Yeah. yeah um, this is great. I love it, by the what's way. What's Eggs' name? Uh, Xander. Xander. When he came Eggs out, Eggs the... is... Eggs is Balk Nasty, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I figured he'd be the steak because he's the big guy. He's the no, beefy Xander guy. calls himself the steak. Oh, uh, okay, sorry. So, Steak Xander, when he came running out, when the reset button picked him, that was so funny. Um, he's coming out yelling, Bulk! Like, you know, I was like, what are the chances? This he's is great. He's so excited. He's so excited. Bulk still punched him in the face. They're a fun team. They are a fun they team. They are a fun team. Um, Bulk did some good power stuff um, where he lifted both of the other guys. Um, fun match. 
fun match. Again, hard to follow the Super Indie title match. Um, and yeah. And we've got new tag team champions. Yeah, and we'll see what happens with the regulators later on. After they ran their mouths that it didn't matter who um, the reset button picked or whom the reset button picked, um, they still uh, didn't keep their word. They didn't live up to their title defense as they said they would. No, 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 no. All right. So now we have the high stakes championship. Again, boom, boom, boom. Three big reset matches in a row. Hooven's going to defend against us. Huss, the beast man. <laughs> and what do you think? Uh, so Hooven decides it's going to be a street fight, which we kind of had in mind because he brought everything everything to the ring with him. The can was on fire when he brought it in the ring. It looked like it was fire rolling out of the garbage can. Yeah, yeah. Um, all of these matches so far, just very quickly, were um, were proof of what Justin Plummer said that the reset button really benefits the challengers. Oh, yeah. Because they can prepare, they can watch footage of all the champions in the event they get picked for a championship match. The champions don't know who their opponents are. Dave said there was hundreds of people. That's right. Behind, you know, backstage. That's so right. So just gave up their weekend to hope to get a title shot. And when you look at the title matches, it was the challengers who had the advantage most of the time because they had their opponents better scouted. Uh, and that was the case here. It seemed like no matter what Hooven did, he couldn't get the upper hand on Beastman. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hooven really only got one offensive, two offensive things in, and one was uh, his finisher with my yeah. air quotes. Yeah. Um, but do you think Beastman actually had him scout? Is Beastman capable of scouting? I don't know. Yeah. I don't does he? He doesn't have technology. Probably not. He's, he's a caveman. Big, right. Yeah, he's a caveman. Yeah. But he's just three times the size of. Oh Hooven. my God, he's humongous. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you love this match? Be honest. No. No, I didn't either. I, I, I didn't either. Uh, this is Hooven was in Philadelphia recording something, and I, I'm always the one that you know looks into stuff like that. I thought, oh man, you could have brought Billy Kidman or. Uh, Raven or Lodi or any one of those guys, ECW hardcore kind of like related to uh, play into what Hooven was going for. And I don't know. It, yeah. I like the Beast Man in general. And I love who You know, we love Hooven. I don't know. Any of those guys could have been back there and just not gotten picked. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. It's a damn button. Yeah. So this is the button's fault. We're not blaming the plumbers for not bringing in no. bigger names. It's the button's no, fault. the button just sucked. For, for not picking but somebody else. Afterwards, we I, we have something set up that I'm actually intrigued about now. Because What's that? Mambo comes out. Oh, right, right. Come on, he's your like third yeah. cousin, right? Yeah, we're related. Um, very quickly, it was a power bomb through a table. They finally put Beast Man. Yeah, Hooven went through everything. Hooven, else, yeah, like, he tank ran him over. Yeah, yeah. Hooven was a little delicate in this match uh, with a lot of his shots, and I'm I'm not sure if it was if he was going for death by a thousand cuts, if he didn't want to upset the Beast Man, but um, his strikes were light, particularly with the weapons. Um, but in the end, um, Hooven I think was set up on a table, and Beast Man was climbing the ropes. Hooven came up under him and power bombed him through for the three count, and then Mambo Italiano comes out. And he, he's upset. He's really never gotten the chance. Da, 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 da. Sets up a match for February 22nd at Ignition. And... Special guest referee. That's, I couldn't think of special. The right. referee is... My <laughs> brain is not here. I'm okay. going to keep looking outside. And I see the snow already. And I'm getting... Um, so we're going to have a special referee. So he gives Mambo a whole month to plan that Hardcore Holly is going to be the special referee. Is it going to be a hardcore match, or is it just hardcore Holly as a special referee? I like, bet, we, I'm lost on that translation. Yeah. That is the only stipulation that Hooven's picking is that I have a special referee. Right now, I would say the only stipula stipulation is that it's a special guest referee, and then we'll see what the match is when we get there. Yeah, February yeah. 22nd. Mambo Italiano's Italian accent is so spot on. 
Which, why wouldn't it be? If he's, he's, a, a tally, he's, he's Italian. He's Italian, right. He just moved here, Tom. I know, yeah. What Does he have it uh, when he's trying out for NXT? Or does he try to be more Americanized when he's... How could you... That'd be like me losing my Ridgeway accent. Right, yeah. It, it doesn't happen. Yeah. He's no, Italian, no, but he, Yeah, he said he... What was he on, NXT? Or he had a tryout for NXT yeah. or something? Yeah. No, he, it, it's spot on. And why wouldn't it be? He's from there, so... Right. Yeah, he's so much fun. He he's is, so yeah. much fun. Uh, next up is the 16-bit challenge. The winner gets the reset button. All right, you can win. You can be eliminated by pinfall, submission, or over the top rope. Okay, that's like an old school, like AWA. Yeah, and Fritz used to have those sorts of things in world class. Yeah, all the territory. A lot of the territories had those sorts of matches. Yeah. First out, last year's winner, Jackson Argos. Yeah, it's crazy. Number yeah. one, having to battle the whole way through again. Yep. And, and I thought, sorry. No, that's right. I was just going to say, I thought for sure he was going to go the whole way through, but now I, I've ruined it for everybody. Yeah, yeah, he well, did no, win. that's all right. You did. He didn't win, guys. He didn't win. At some point, we were going to say that. So, uh, number two out was RJ City. Great to see him back. If he pops in once a year, twice a year, I- I'm happy. I, he, he, You were getting food at the start of this. And he was sitting on the turnbuckle doing his shtick. No, I did see that. You were walking in with yeah. food. And I'm like, look who's on the turnbuckle. Oh, and you're like, <laughs> like a new, like me with the uh, WWE ice cream bars coming Holy back. Holy cow. I was, yeah, I guess I was about as excited as you in a WWF ice cream bar. Wow. Uh, he's funny. He cleared his throat and people popped. And he goes, well. I, I guess all I have to do is clear phlegm from my throat and it makes you people happy. Then he, a Sheets chant. Yep. Got it. Because he's like, after this, I'm going to go to Sheets and get some Ludens or I don't know what he said, but you know, something. Yeah. So everybody started chanting Sheets. We, uh, he's little, funny. Yeah. yeah, he's great. He I can direct a crowd City. easily. Yep, yep. A yep. uh, little banter there. Um, sexy Fireman, number three, but wait. Love it and Dawn buys it. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. He gets a cigar, he gets sunglasses and money, and Sexy Fireman out the door. Yep, Sexy Fireman leaves, and Lebanon Don takes his place. And we were wondering, why would you buy the third spot? You have the cash, buy the 16th spot. Right. The Million Dollar Man bought number 30 yeah. from Akeem. You said on the way home, then, maybe he wanted to make sure he got in. Yeah. And Jason is the easiest to get to, because... Yeah, he's looking at, looking and... ahead, these names that are now coming out, there's no way in hell he's going to buy some of these people. Yeah, yeah. So, opportunity, and he lasted a while. Yeah. So, um, number four was Duke Davis. Number five was David Lawless. Six was uh, Pete Alonzo, Joe Alonzo, I don't know, Mets first baseman. I don't know who the hell this guy was. Uh, Joe Alonzo, I don't <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know who that is. Uh, seven was Dan Murphy, not the second baseman. Right. Uh, and then, uh, Gannon Jones Jr., and then Liddy came out. Liddy, we're up to number nine. Mm-hmm. Um, Liddy was thick, really thick, not yeah. dancing around as much, and it sets up a whole, it almost gave away what was going to happen. Yeah, we kind of predicted that. Um, also, Soup noticed... Liddy's shoes, which was a dead giveaway. He didn't, first of all, he didn't have his spongy shoes, his character shoes on right. or whatever. He had Chris LaRusso shoes on. He did have Chris LaRusso shoes, yeah. So he takes his mask off, and it's Chris LaRusso, and he double nut shots the main event uh, and gets them eliminated. Yeah. Um which the real question here, my concern is, where's the real Liddy the Kitty? What happened to him? I don't know. Number ten, <laughs> a huge surprise, unbelievable. Our boy, yeah, Al freaking Snow comes out, and you're like, did you know this? I'm like, I did not. That I was fun. Did, I did not. That was fun. Al came in, had a, had a little bit uh, going around, and then Atticus came out as eleven, and the whole culmination came out. Yep. And Al kicked all their asses. Yep. And Al got a "You still got a chant" while he was kicking everybody's ass. He he's in great shape. He's 
I think in better shape now than when he was a fully active wrestler. When he uh, does the Iron Sheik thing, what, that's what you were saying. The, the, he swings Persian clubs. He's, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Him See, and, but oh, no American can do that. Bob Backlund started to. And head got his showed head. him how. Okay. All right. So all right. head trained him to get him ready to do. I head's see. Unbelievable. Yeah. And head was in attendance. Head was there, and he used head. Um, he threw everybody out. Even except the, Atticus. Except Atticus. None of the other guys were in the match, but he dumped them all out, and then Atticus dumped him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number 12 was Katie, and this is what you were talking about. This was a great spot for Katie. Great spot. I don't know that it lasted more than two minutes, and yet it was enough. It and told le- a story. It told a story and left us wanting more. Well done, Katie. Um, spotlight of the night. One absolutely. of the spotlights of the night. Absolutely. At least of this match, it was the highlight for me. She, wow. She, Even she, over the winner. Yeah. All right. Yeah. She beat some ass, and she took some devastating moves from Atticus. Uh, and she gets pinned. He grabbed her in like um, like a headlock, but rather than a bulldog, he fell forward like a, you know, like you would fall backwards for a DDT, he fell forward with it. I don't know what the kids are calling that these days, but he smashed her face into the mat and pinned her. 13 was Phoenix. He comes out, has a nice run. Angelic comes out. Uh, Gory. Yeah. You're not into the... I like Gory better. I'm sorry. Yeah, we've, we've yeah. said that. Yeah. 15 was my boy, Jimmy Nuts. He had a nice little run for a while. Nice to see Nutter in this. Yeah. And then number 16 was a big another surprise. Uh, Brian Pillman Jr. Uh, yeah, I've never seen him... Anywhere, really. Uh, not even on YouTube or anything like that. Um, not You have not watched I have any it. MLW or anything no, like that. No, I haven't. I haven't. But I he, do suck. He's, he's very great. good. He's very good. Absolutely <clears throat> very good wrestler. He's great. We have more to say about this uh, down the line. Yeah, his mullet is glorious. And, you know, I thought Brian Pillman Sr. had some terrific hair. Brian Pillman Jr.'s hair is just gorgeous. That mullet is fantastic. He's bringing it back. Good. Uh, Shaved sides and everything. Looks like the dad from My Two Dads. The, the oh taller Oh, my one. God. <laughs> That's a good what thing. <laughs> That's a good thing. He was a handsome fella. 80s sitcom reference. Go back and uh, check that out. My Two Dads. Yep. Was it 80s? It was 80s. Late 80s, early 90s. 90s. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, Doogie Howser era. Yeah. All in all, Atticus wins. Yeah. And I'm already, you know, boom. He now yep. has this. And I said this uh, during this match. Uh, Jimmy Nuts comes out 15. Yeah. And as much as I'd want him to win, I, I don't think a face should ever have this reset button. And let's stop on the whole, you know, a face should never have the reset button. Because just the dastardly moves that a heel yep. can have when they have this reset button. Because a face, somebody like Jimmy Nuts coming in at 15, winning this, um, he's going to announce, hey, Next month I'm going to use this because he's a he's a good guy. Right. Palace right. do the same. People like that do the same. Right. These sons of bitches, you know, culmination, they're going to use it on any and every title if they want. Yeah, like look at Jackson Argos when he had it. Yeah. yeah you're going to be a jerk about it. You're going to threaten to use it. You're going to tease using it. All that stuff. Yeah, it's better when it's on a bad guy. Yeah. Uh, next up is... The, one other quick thing about this match, though. The, right, um, yeah, sure. Yeah, you noticed uh, the Lebanon Don, even being a heel himself, was uh, mixing it up with the uh, the judge and the uh, the cop, whatever the hell their name is. Okay. Wallace and, and... Wallace and Order. And I wonder, like, how many times he's appeared before that judge. And oh, how many times has the cop picked him up? Yeah, yeah. You know, being a thug and all. Um, And and this was probably their opportunity to, like, you know what? We can't put this guy away. We're going to put him away. This guy has... That's what I love about wrestling is they settle it in the ring. You can't get it settled in the courtroom. You settle it in the ring. I'm sorry, Mark. Go ahead. This guy's got money from all over the place. That's right. He paid Jason off in, I think, American money. He's trying to pay other people off with... He... Rubles or whatever. (laughs) I don't know what the hell he has. (laughs) But he just has money from all over. I mean, this guy is wealthy. The Canadian dollars. He paid off Jackson Argos in Canadian dollars. 
Yeah, but he yeah. also paid Jay, uh, Jason off in other money. And uh. then he tried paying somebody else. Bobby, of course, took the money and ran. As soon as he got eliminated, money got thrown all over the place. Yeah. And Bobby, the greatest referee, was picking it up and taking it to the carriage in for the night. Ah, uh, it's so entertaining. No, no clue where. He, I mean, do you think he's got some kind of? Like, oh, I'm sure he's come from scheme. No, but he comes from old money. So he's he's, he's related he's his, to Al Capone. Yeah, I was gonna say he's a descendant of Al Capone. He comes from old money. Right. Really Probably has investments going back to who knows when. Oh yeah, investments. That's what the kids are calling them these days. Uh, women's match, Ray Lynn against the reset button, and uh, oh. it was against Amy Rose. Amy Rose, part of ROH, uh, and I only knew this after I came home and looked it up. Because- I was going to say, you must have looked this up, because I turned to Mark for wrestling knowledge, guys, and when I turned to him, he shook his head and shrugged. And, and you know, nothing against Amy Rose, you got to start somewhere. Um, but if Mark hasn't heard of you, then you may not have been in the business for very, very long. She she may have been. Again, it's just not featured a lot. Not yeah. She's just not around, and I don't know. Um, Ray, Ray Lynn, don't hate me. This this was this is not my favorite match. No. And no, I'll put it, it like wasn't. that nicely. Yeah, same here. Um, I thought the beginning of it had potential. I like what Ray Lynn was doing with some of the holes, like, struggling to get some of the holes, struggling to get a wrist lock or struggling to grab her around the waist. I I enjoyed that. It gave me the illusion of a wrestling match, of a fight, and I enjoyed it. Uh, Unfortunately, that first minute or two is probably the highlight of the match. Raylan keeps her title, and... We move on to see who Raylan will defend against later. She did. She did good work. She Raylan, did, yeah, she always did. does good work. She's only gotten better. Um, with all due respect, I'm Calvin just, looked amazing. He did. He did. I'm just not sure her opponent was up to snuff. Snuff. Yeah, particularly for an event like this. Sorry, Amy Rose. Yeah. No. No disrespect. Uh, I hope we see you again. But. Eh. Uh, what the hell was RC's romper room video that he put in? At some point, you know, they were kumbaya <laughs> around and painting each other and painting each other, and Soup was sucking it. Soup loved this. By the yeah. way, inconspicuous what by his absence. He was uh, supposed to come over with scones and coffee and such, and yeah. good thing your wife makes a good scone. Yeah, they were pretty good. They came out, they came out okay. Yeah, they, uh, RC is suspended. I don't need him on TV. Uh, did you sign the petition to bring him back? No, but I should. Why? He knew the rules. All right. Listen. No. You know. No. No. Very quickly. No. Very quickly. You know what a huge Razor Ramon fan I was back in the day. Huge. You still dress up as a. I on still do. Saturdays. Should Shawn Michaels be reinstated? No. I called and said yes because I wanted to see the match. I wanted to see Razor and Shawn Michaels. So, so what do you want to see from RC? He deserves to be back in the ring. To do what? To compete. Because he's a competitor and he's a good wrestler. Bottom of the barrel starting. Yeah, all right. But bring him back. I'm not saying he's got to come into a title picture, but, you know, give him a match against one of the recent graduates. Prelim. Yeah. Next. Let's only start in March. Put him against that Anthony Young kid. Put him against that... Um... Test tube baby. What? Yeah, you didn't see him. He, no. He's also another graduate. He wasn't uh. here this time. Probably in the back, there's a test tube baby that just graduated as well. Soup loves him. Okay, I'll, you can explain that to me later. No, uh, it's legit. That's his. It's his gimmick. He's really? a test tube baby that turned into a wrestler. <laughs> wow. All right. So that's where he should start when okay. he comes back. Fine. Then start there. But and to, if he ever wants to be in the heavyweight title shot, he needs to run the gamut through everything. Yeah. Starting from Hooven. Okay. Nothing yeah. against Hooven. You know, get the high stakes title back. Okay. Yeah. Keep that. And as you're keeping that, get a tag team partner. Once you're going for the tag team titles, you have to relinquish the high stakes then and go for the tag team, no matter who has it, before this you climb ridiculous. the whole ladder. Yeah. Uh, super indie and then heavyweight. So, like a PlayStation 1 WCW Yeah, like video you game. need to. Okay, you're you the one the, that yeah. chose to intervene yourself knowing that, hey, do not come in this match. You will be suspended indefinitely. So if you're going to do this, R.C., you need, before you do anything, work your way from the bottom yeah. 
Maybe you should be a janitor there for a while. Oh, now you're getting ridiculous. The segment <laughs> made no sense, but I loved it. R.C. Dupree is committed to it. Everybody Dude, in the video an, is committed to it. He's an artiste. It. He is an artiste. It was hilarious. It was fun to watch. It was perfectly pro wrestling. Uh, I'm curious to see where it goes from here. I can't wait till he's back. That, yeah, I mean, that was all yeah. a stick. I, yeah. I can't wait till he's back. He's freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, we have our break, and then we have uh, Chase Gold versus Jimmy Vegas. You love Chase Gold because he smells great. Yeah. Best smelling man in wrestling. Easily the best smelling man in the arena last night. We weren't bad. No, we weren't bad, but I'm just saying. He, he is easily the best smelling guy there last night. This was a fun match. Vegas uh, killed him. Vegas killed him. Vegas hit some nice power moves, hit some Razor Ramon fallaway slams, um, power slam, uh, which is his style. What I like about... IWC is it's old school in a sense that everybody tells their story. You saw a couple of flips over the top rope, through the rope, suicide dives, whatever we're calling them these days, but everybody wrestles their style of match rather than a three-hour program where everyone's trying to do the same stuff. Um, So in that regard, I always enjoy going there for that because you're going to see some different things from different wrestlers. This was um, a, not a squash match, but a much bigger guy against a newer, younger, smaller kid who ran his mouth. And, you know, Vegas even said, you want to run your mouth? And, and whip his ass for it. He runs IWC. That's right. Founding father. Yep. Uh, next match, Team Big League, which you were excited to see back. Uh, McChesney, Eli, not Eli. The man uh, died. Well, why the hell? Um, why, why was I thinking oh, Eli Drake all of a sudden? You only wish, man, died that you were Eli Drake. Oh <laughs> uh, wow! Uh, I need some more coffee. All right, so coming it was up, coming up, McChesney, Mandime, and Zach against Palace Slade, and then the reset button. Right. And the reset button picks big time Bill Collier. He is still. Uh, a massive man. I mean, not that he would have, you know, shrunk, shrunk or right. anything. He is just huge, and it's great to see him back. Some of his matches with Jimmy Nuts back in the day, yeah. when Nuts got thrown all over White Oak, uh, Jimmy would never say this was a great match, but uh, one of my some of my favorite stuff. Him and Jimmy put on some great matches. He is a very good worker. He, you know, sometimes you see some of these guys in IWC and you wonder why they're not making a ton of money. He's one of those people. Yeah. Um, He looks like a star. He's got a great build, great look, high energy, but like... High energy? uh, Like Coco Coco Beware at own heart? Yep, yep. Holy (laughs) crap. Jeez. Uh, But genuine energy, you know, in the ring. Um, I like him a lot. And when my son saw him, first of all, we didn't see right away um, because um, before the match started, my son had to go, party, party. Sorry. I used that last night and you didn't even look at me. Now you're using it. Yeah, I stole it from you. I didn't get it last night. Then I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now. Yeah, my son had to go to the bathroom and we came back. Um, Just from what I could hear from the door, it sounded like a good match. And then what we saw once we finally got in, it was a very good six-man tag team match. Um, Bill Collier got the bulk of the action, I would say. The bulk of the action. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I would say. He got the bulk uh, of the action. The big league gets the win, and... <sighs> well, he went to... He was cleaning house, and then accidentally punched Andrew Palace in the face. Right. Knocked him out. And That's not who got pinned, though. Like, knocked him out, like knocked him out of the ring. Right. Yeah. Right. Nonetheless, you know, Team Big League gets the win. Uh, Palace is out of the ring. He leaves. He gives a glance back and then just walks away. So more on Palace next month. Yeah. Uh, Slade and Collier just decide to leave then. So yeah. yeah. No, no crossing paths. I wanted to see more. I, I did. I did. I wanted... There, there's been teasing all month about, you know, just things going on with Team Big League I thought number four was going to come, and it would have been a perfect place for number four to come. Yeah. And he, I'm almost positive, Mark disagreed with me last night. He was a member. Palace was a member of Team Big League 
back in the day. I'm, I'm almost positive it was McChesney, Palace, and Jimmy Nuts. You can go back and watch it was Brooks as well. Brooks was in it right. as well. You can go back and watch. I think the one with Roddy Piper and Gold Dust. I believe that was Team Big League back then. Okay. I thought Palace back in the day because this was like this was a show right before we started going religiously to IWC. Right. right. I thought Palace was an STD. I could be wrong. Ah. But it sounds bad. Palace is not an STD. Andrew Palace is a human being. I remember watching. Um, uh, an IWC event from several years ago, and he was on commentary. I believe McChesney was in a match, and Palace was hilarious right. with his biased commentary. But okay. we'll have to look into that and, and see. But hey, yeah, you, you know where you can find all this? Tell us. On the IWC network for only nine ninety nine a month. You get all their pay-per-views. You get everything back to 2012 right now, I believe. So we'll be able to find that. Yeah, all right. Nine ninety nine. We'll decide. We'll see who's right. Yeah. We'll see who's right. I, I wanted more. I wanted more. I would have been okay with Palace looking, turning. He's a good guy. He's a nice guy. He deserves to speak Is his mind. Is he the guy? Is he the guy? Oh, jeez. He deserves to speak his mind. Your partner accidentally punched you in the face. You have every right to be pissed off. It was a reset button partner, though. It's not like him and right. Paul, you're going to have drinks at the carriage inn. Yeah, still. Now we get the main event. Jack Pollock against the reset button. And the reset button let us down. Yeah. I know it's got a mind of its own, but it chose someone we saw earlier in the night, one half of the former tag team champions. And I'm not uh, I'm not mad about that. I, I, anybody else could have. I, I, I am. You are? I am. You don't like seeing two people, one person? No, play? I don't mind that at all. No. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't want to see Jock. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I don't want to see Jock. But if it would have picked anybody else again, and maybe you, Jackson would have got it. Yeah. All right. That would have made sense. Cool. Yeah. But seeing somebody twice a night, I'm all right with. I seeing... saw Steve Jones twice in one night. <laughs> he won both times. Once against Steve Lombardi and once against Butcher Paul Vachon. But go ahead. I, I, how can I follow up seeing S.D. Jones twice in one night? That's oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, when Jock came out, the fans kind of spoke their mind. Same thing I just did. I don't know. Yeah, they, they got a chant of, uh, cover your ears, kids. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit going. Um it was a little, nothing against Jock Sampson. He's entertaining. He hates us as it is. He so hates us as matter. it is. Yeah. No, he's entertaining. He's a good worker. He makes the people laugh. Um, the the only thing I like about Jock Sampson is the Ronnie Millsap song. Yeah. And now he's gotten rid of that and made it more regulators. So yeah. nothing against the regulator song. I like the regulator song as well. But uh. we we were expecting a huge payoff. We were expecting. Um, bigger name or, or someone that maybe made a little more sense uh it would have been cool Splash. yeah yeah it would have been cool if it was jackson argos like you said that would have made a lot of sense rc yeah it, it, you know even though he's suspended wouldn't that have been cool if because the the reset button's picking it not right. plumber making the right. matches right so. yeah and again we're not blaming iwc we're blaming the reset right. button for choosing jock sampson right uh all in all the culmination comes out and you think Atticus is going to hit the button. He was pretty damn close. Yeah. If he doesn't hit it, button gets thrown around. Uh, and then Pillman comes out. Pillman Jr. comes out. Kind of yep. helps him, but has this... What word did he use? Because this is a different type of contract that's ever extensive. been... Extensive. Yeah. He has an extensive contract. Which we yeah. need to look into what that is. Yeah. But he does get a title shot. Yeah. And yeah. If you haven't figured it out, Pollock, Jack Pollock wins. Pollock. Pollock, as Brian Pillman called him. Is <laughs> because first of all, it's Pollock. So he gets his title shot. And he's gonna get it next month. At Ignition, right. you know. Good match. Know. You know, all right. N not not terrific. Not great. I think fans and honestly, guys sitting in the crowd, um, and, and maybe you guys see it sitting there too from from the commentary booth and everything else 
people started putting their jackets on, they started getting their hats on, checking to see where they had their keys. Uh, it was a bit of a letdown as a main event. Yeah, it, it was. But, all right, uh, Jack keeps his title, as we said. Brian's facing him next month. All right, let's do a, an overview real quick. Um, and I want to touch on something because Megan Nelson will be upset if I don't bring okay. this up. Um, during the hardcore match, uh, something ended up in the ring that oh, we should not have. Um we're a family-friendly show here, right? Yeah. Uh, Plumber always states that. Make sure you go through your weapons because I don't know if Sylvan saw it. No. Thank God. No, he didn't. So no. uh, Megan sent us a picture of it because from where <laughs> I was sitting, I could. It was kind of covered. There. I, yeah. How do we say it nicely? It was. Um, it was a toy. It was a, a woman's toy. Yeah. yeah, we'll leave it at it that. It could be a guy's toy. It could be anybody's toy. An adult toy. <laughs> it was not a wrestling figure. Wasn't a wrestling That's figure. That's the toy for us. Yeah, wasn't a wrestling figure. So, um, make sure you go through your, your weapons. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want to explain to Sylvan what it is, or Ethan, or maybe another parent's got it now. It, it was in plain view at some point. So, yeah. that if we're, if we're going to keep it family-friendly, as we always say, uh, let's... Uh, Wrap this up. Okay. No. Um, you didn't get it wrapped I, Yeah. I just, right. But I thought it was a, a, you know, dual meaning. Like. Oh, it's a dual meaning. Yeah, it could yeah. be dual meaning several different ways. <laughs> All right. IW, I would you, yeah. IWC reloaded. The reset button. Out of six beers. Not my favorite event this year, probably. With you being the host, I'll go first. You go last. I just gave um, my analysis, but go ahead. I cracked open a third beer, but didn't finish it. Probably two and a half out of six beers. Yeah. Uh, you know why I'm going to give it the full three? Because Al Snow was there. Yeah. Uh, and and they both, Plummer and Al, both pulled something over me that I legit didn't know. When Al came out, that was I was excited. Yeah. I really was. I was too. And you, you looked right at me and said, did you know? And I'm like, I did not. So, yeah. and that's why. Um, um, yeah, that first match was hard to follow. But I wouldn't have put it first. I would not have put it first. Some bright spots. Everybody worked their style of match. Most matches were good. A couple were not. Only that um, that first actual match, not, not the pre-show. The um, Johnny Patch, Jonathan Gresham match was great. Gresham can only have great matches, so... Um, and I think Johnny Patch is on his way there. The rest of it was so-so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it, we... Plummer cannot continue to blow the money that we want him to. Right. So, no disrespect. We still love you. Reloaded will still be uh, one of my favorite events. Uh, can't wait for seven. But now we're on to Ignition. Yep. February 22nd. Uh, Jeff Cobb's been announced to be there. Again, Hardcore Holly. So make sure you go to IWCWrestling.com. Get your tickets for that. We will uh, be in attendance. But do you want to take a break real quick and uh, reset? <laughs> sure. And Good then one. come back and wrap up the rest of the week, you know, briefly, quickly? Absolutely. Yeah, sounds good. We'll get some more coffee. But yeah. let's tell everybody about one thing, because Al Snow would be pissed if we didn't say this. Man, he was just fresh on our minds. We saw him last night. Yeah. Go ahead, Mark. How about collar and elbow? How we, about it? We love collar and elbow. I got my hoodie on today. Yes, you do. And uh, it's a little brisk, so it's keeping me nice and toasty warm. It's a comfortable shirt. You can go to collarandelbow.com. Hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool things. And we have a promo code. It is Can Crushers. Really easy to remember. Just capitalize both C's. Capital C for Can, capital C for Crushers, all one word. Can Crushers. And you'll get 10% off of whatever they're doing on there. So, uh, callerandelbow.com. They do great things. They have some great merch. And check it out. But let's listen to Al. And then we'll be back to wrap up the week. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand, the wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. 
Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. This is the fashionista of professional wrestling, Calvin Couture. And I'm glad you're listening to me, but I don't really know why you're listening to this podcast, but whatever, they paid me a lot to say this. So enjoy Can Crushers, I guess. Welcome back to Can Crushers. We just heard from our good friend Al Snow over at Collar and Elbow. Uh, we went over the IWC Reloaded event, and now we're going to briefly touch on the rest of the week in pro wrestling, Mark. Yeah, Calvin brought us back as well, John, and do you think he uh, really liked the laundry boy look that you and Cody Rhodes <laughs> had going together at one point in your lives? Uh, no. I don't think he would like that at all. No. Yeah. I, people were saying Cody was supposed to be Don Johnson, and he looked more like a laundry boy like you did. Yeah. What Mark is referencing, <laughs> you guys, in high school. In I college. Uh, and then you're late in your 20s. That's not true at all. In high school, high school, college at least, you had those same shorts. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> I liked, so denim, denim was in then, and I had, I had blue, I had black, and I had white. And one time, you and I were all white. white. One, I, I always had like, I was into Adidas, I was into Nike, I had white sneakers with white socks white shorts and i always had all sorts of t-shirts too like like now i love t-shirts yeah like the one shirt that you wore when we were making a video for high school it said do me not, not drugs. drugs yeah and yeah. it ended up being broadcasted all over all the school yeah on, i didn't uh, think that through um but anyway in this particular time i had like a white jim morrison shirt on t-shirt and my look was like denim t-shirt and like an unbuttoned button-down shirt that I either wore or wrapped around my waist and everything so I wore a white button-down shirt I didn't think this through I got to school and realized I was in all white and then Mark and all the other jerks <laughs> named me laundry boy because I looked like a guy that must have gone around the hotel rooms and tore sheets off of beds or something or, or worked in a laundry I don't even know what it means we didn't but, either I looked like Laundry Boy. So, watching AEW, my wife asks me why this guy is dressed like Don Johnson, but then Mark is texting me that he looks like Laundry Boy. I'm sure I texted you before your wife asked you about yeah. Don Johnson. It was, I literally saw Cody come out, you know, pump and <laughs> stuff's going off, and I'm like, oh my God, he's all in white, that's Laundry Boy. It, it was not... Yeah. Your wife does have some great ideas, though, because this is going to well, run longer. Before we go get into that, by college, though, I do remember freshman year, I'd switch to, like, Skechers and brown boots type of shoes, and I had regular jeans on, and my shirts weren't white, because you were working in a grocery store when I came in to see you. Right. And you said, ah, new look. I'll never forget that, because I'd given up the laundry boy look. I, I don't remember that. I don't I'll never forget that. it. I, I was, I'm an asshole. You are. You really are. I love you. I know. I love you, too. Um, so your wife has some great ideas. Uh, is we Before, oh, when we eat scones and stuff, Cody's wearing too much foundation, she said. Yeah. You, do you agree with this? I guess. I, I can't say I noticed. I was easily fooled. I forgot his hair wasn't as bleach blonde as his brother and his father. I don't know. I was fooled by it. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to give her her spots. Yeah. I know she listens. Do you think he wears too much makeup? I was just playing the part. Yeah, I, I yeah. Can't tell I, it it was lost on us. Yeah, no clue. But hey, you know what? I was on her side one time. Yeah. And if I'm gonna get another scone the next time we come back, yeah, better I'll be on play her side. It. Yeah. Uh, all right, AEW in a hole. Um, wasn't great. No. Nah. It wasn't bad. Right. You know, there was a train wreck at one point, and we'll get to it. Yeah. Okay. We'll get, we'll get to it. Uh, did you like the four way match? I mean, we're briefly gonna. Skip uh, I'm never a fan of four-way matches like that, but this one was one of the better ones I've seen. 
Omega and Page get the win. I like that they're getting the win. I do. They're now the number one contenders to get it, you know, at SU on the boat. Are you excited to watch uh, wrestling from a cruise ship this week? Ah, uh, not really. I don't know um, how they're going to pull this off. Yeah. What, what if it's a thunderstorm? You know, I know. The whole TV show is wet. Haven't they learned from past experiences like that? Like this on location stuff with Sturgis and the motorcycles was a terrible idea. Oh my God, that's. Yeah. They, they kept going back to that, though. The whole yeah. match is. Yeah. Like, <laughs> And there was a lifeguard there. That poor woman just had to sit there in a bikini the whole show. And yeah, hey, I don't, whatever. Um, Cody says yes to all stipulations, and I'm excited to see where this goes. His uh, promos are always great. He doesn't need to win the Wardlow match, and I would hope he actually doesn't win the Wardlow match in the cage. It, it'll tell a better story if he's hurt getting the lashings. Mm-hmm. You know, compared. interesting. I'd like him to win, but get really hurt during in the process. Not really hurt. Like, really hurt? Air no, quotes? no, of course not. Well, the way not, that not, you said it, I'd like him to get really hurt. I mean, like, I want him to win and leave with an angled injury. Damaged. Yeah, that, that plays into his actual match with MJF later. Okay. Uh, the train wreck is what I'm talking about here. Brandy and Mel. Uh, it was supposed to be Kong. Kong got sick, so Brandy took over. Uh, Luther came out, Statlander and Sheeta. Oh, man, I see potential in Statlander. I, I really do. I don't know. This match was horrible. There was a kick that was three hours away. <laughs> there was a flip that ended up just being a push down. And the thing is, last night, we saw someone standing on the apron... Uh, you know, outside the ring, standing on the apron, the opponent was outside the ring, and this person jumped off with, like, a forearm or, like, a double axe handle. That, that makes the most sense. That's, like, the most immediate opportunity. Why do a flip just to land on your feet? And it's a backwards flip, so you're not even... Close? Uh, yeah, you're not, you're not even close, first of all, and you don't even have the momentum going the way you want it. There was just no need for this dumb flip that missed, Bad. but that 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 the wrestler had to sell anyway. Yeah, uh, I didn't enjoy that women's match, but I don't. I, we've talked and uh, we've talked a ton. Um, AEW needs to reset their women's roster. Uh, it needs help. Bring something in, you know, whatever. Um, I enjoy, and, and we love some of the people on the yeah, roster. Yeah. It just needs something. I enjoy any time Brandy Rhodes is on a screen. Well, yeah. It's fine with me. Oh, there's your wife. Oh, perfect time. <laughs> um, John, for her work. Right. That's why. Yeah. 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 She is amazing at working. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Dark Order. Am I really the only one that likes them? I like what they're slowly doing with I these do guys. I do, too. No, I do, too. It's you fun. You hear other people, this is stupid, this is nonsensical, there's too many people. It's the NWO with masks on, guys. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what they're going to do. How many Black Scorpions were there? And the Black Scorpion was fun when we were kids. I, I, I like the Dark Order. It's hokey. Like, right. when, when the Ultimate Warrior got bitten by the snake and the camera's going wonky and in and out and everything... Well, how are we seeing it through the Ultimate Warrior's eyes? Who cares? It's wrestling. When a guy's sitting in his hotel room and a subliminal message comes on his TV from the I Dark Order. I get Wars, those at home. Right. I get them at home. I'm okay with it. I love the Dark Order. I it's can't fun. wait till we find out who is going to be the lead of this. Yeah. Uh, Marty Skrull was supposed to possibly be, but oh. now he's re-signed with ROH and he's the head booker. Uh, he does have... The freedom to go NWA, AEW, whatever, do the New Japan things. But I don't think you make him the leader now that he's a head right. booker of ROH. Right. Uh, other thoughts are um, the guy that just got released from WWE, he was uh, Harper. Oh. Uh, could, oh, that could, would be cool. He could be over there and he could, you know, I don't know. Um, Al Perez? No, he was Perez the black would be great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Finally, God. get get his just due and that be would... the guy behind the behind it all, right? Yes. But anyway, good call. Um, so I'm all right with it. Uh, Sammy G and Moxley. All right, I, I, I've given Moxley his due. Um, he's good. He's not Dean Ambrose anymore to me. Right. I'm I'm all for him. Agree. Uh, 
Sammy G is just flipping amazing. I yes. love Sammy yeah. G. I have a man crush on him. Yeah, I mean, that bit at the beginning, like the In Excess video with the cards, was hilarious. I loved it. We gave you... And it wasn't like insulting. It was almost like, no, we're hurt. Right. We offered you this, and you turned us down, and he flips another card. We gave you a chance. Oh, it was great. It's so much fun. This was. This is continuing to be a great wrestling uh, story. Jericho comes out. He takes the time to unscrew one of those spikes off his jacket and plunges it into his eye. Yep. Awesome. And, and at some point, Jericho says something to a referee who then immediately runs over to Moxley. Whether it was to relay information, whether it was, oh my gosh, I think I heard him check on him, I don't know. And who did we see last night? Your buddy, who always says it's about making them guess what's real. Al Snow. I, that's just one of the most brilliant things I've ever heard. Because that captivated me. That made me watch, like, holy cow, I hope he's okay. I you hope know? his eye doesn't come out on this spike. And he didn't oversell. No. He didn't oversell, like, you know, writhing around or whatever. He's a big, tough dude who's probably gotten beat up and punched in the face and hit in the eye many times. And while this probably stung like a son of a bitch, he wasn't going to give them the satisfaction of overselling this. I love this whole segment. I, I did. And I didn't need blood. I did not need I blood here. No. No, not at all. We've all been stuck with a pin or whatever. You don't In the eye? Not in the eye. Times no, have like, you been stuck in the eye? <laughs> like you, you prick yourself by accident or something. You don't bleed, but you puncture. You know, that kind of pain. That kind of sting. Butcher, Blade, MJF against QT, DDP, and Dustin. Uh, the best thing about this match was MJF's shirt. I banged Diamond Dallas's <sighs> daughter. I, could, I forgot about that. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's crazy. And again, DDP is such a pro. He did not oversell that. He, what is he, 63, 64, something, something like, like that. that? yeah. He looked great. He looks fantastic. And he's a New Yorker, too, so he just, like, stared lasers through him, like, I'm going to F this guy up now. Yeah. Yeah. MJF's amazing. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see what's going to happen there. Uh, Pac against Darby. Man, Darby's so good. Yeah. I, I don't... I wasn't behind Neville. I wasn't behind whatever, whatever the next incarnation, and now Pac. I, there's something about him that... You know, he's a bastard. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, he, he may be in real life a bastard. But Darby, I like. Yeah. Was this towards the end? Or this was this a main event? We skipped that bastard. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. But with everything else happening, I would have thought maybe... And maybe this is Cody not wanting to give himself the spotlight. I would think that six-man match would have gone on last. Right. But, but still, no, no. Pac and Darby was very good. Yeah, well... I would have probably liked to see Sammy and Moxley last. That too? That, yeah. You yeah. know, ending with Jericho poking him in the eye. Yep. But then we saw uh, Moxley storm the ring. Yeah. Yeah. And all yeah. That. So, yeah. Uh, AEW good. Yeah, very good. Good. Very good. Uh, continues and, to be very good. Not always great, but continues to be pretty good. <coughs> NWA, uh, NW, tons of pay per view this coming weekend, and we'll touch on that as well. Uh, <coughs> all this right into ROH causing havoc, looking for Marty. In ROH, and then he just decides to uh, take out Flip. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, another invasion angle. You can't go wrong with something like that. I enjoyed that. Um, he was Nick Aldis is very cool. He was in Concord, North Carolina. That's uh, actually where Chad and I went to the Crockett Cup. Um, yeah, and he took offense to to these guys. ROH showing yeah. up there. That's yeah. his territory. That's right. Uh, not his fault. Hey, looking at the crowd, not as full yeah. for ROH as it is for the Crockett Cup. Um, is this something you'd want to come down with us? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You'd be yeah. allowed? Would I be allowed? Are you kidding me? As long as Brandy's She's, she's in there. another room. Right? She's in another room, so yeah. I can say this. Yeah, of course I'm going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Rock and Roll Express comes out. They're, they're just talking, you know. Crying about this, crying about that, that, you know, Ricky was almost crying about money, you know, and I, I don't know if I like this pantering that he had, that they've been doing this all their life and they're not getting paid. Are they actually saying they want to get paid or, you know, I'm not saying they're having a heel turn or anything, but there, there was just something about this little bit. I'm like, what? I I like it. No, 
it, it's an old timer saying like, we paved the way for you guys, and we didn't make nearly the money you they guys did, make. I now. understand that. Yeah. yeah, he's got a right to gripe, and he's still a champion. Right. So he's getting more now than champions make more. Yeah. Right. So all right, uh, the TV bracket has been announced, and I'm excited about this. All, most of it. There's yeah. one match this week yet that they'll wrap it up. But uh, Tim Storm against a Dawson. Yeah. Ricky Starks against an Open. It can be anybody. Anybody who's a free agent. Anybody can come in and be in this. Uh, Zicky Dice against an Open. And then the question mark against uh, Murdoch and Latimer. Before we knew the brackets, before we knew what was going on, we all, I thought Eli was going to be a part of this, you know, this, that, and the other. He still could be, and I think he'd be a great TV champion. But off of what we have, what's your prediction? Who do you think is going to win out of this? Um, I want to see Trevor Murdoch get a push for this title. Um, I think the question mark doesn't need a title. Doesn't need it. He's been fun to watch. It's about time for him to exit. Uh, the, the tournament. The tournament. Oh. Yeah. All right. Um, you told me yesterday that you think um, the guy that does commentary, Bad News Barrett, it, might sneak his way into this it's thing. It's open. Yeah, that would be fun. Uh, my son just got a Bad News Barrett figure last night at IWC for he five did. bucks. He did. Yeah. That's a nice, yeah. it's a nice Maybe that's a clean. sign. It's very clean. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's a sign of uh, things to come. Yeah, I'd l- I like Trevor Murdoch. I like what he's doing. I do like him. Yeah. I do like him, but in open, in, you know, Stu has now filled the commentary hole for, you know, a month and a half now. They could have done some stuff. Right. I know Kyle Davis is in the back that can fill in right then and there. Um, and Stu should get back in the ring. I-, I-, I loved him as Nexus, you know, when he was in there. I got some bad news for you. He's good. He is yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, how, did you like the Dawson versus Dawson match? It was all right. They're they're very uh, similar styles, similarly built. It's about what I expected. Yeah. Uh, two brothers scuffling. Yeah. You know, yeah. Us in shop class or home yeah, or something. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> the Hard Times video was great. It, it just it. I like Strictly Business. I love that name now. Yeah. It's not. As big as Horseman or DX or something like that, but strictly business. They're, yep. they're, they're there. Yep. It's a little subdued in that regard. Yeah. Um, Ashley Box against Molina. Any any thoughts on Molina didn't look crisp in this match. It was, yeah, it was it was okay. It got the point across that um, she's getting the title shot next week. I like that move. What did she do? Like a, a split on her opponent or something at the yeah. end? Like a leg drop split? Um and didn't need, like, a full cover for the pin. Yeah. And then the post-match interview is she is challenging the champion. She wants Allison K. Even though Thunder Rosa should be. Right. It's breaking down right in front they're, of our they're, eyes. They're rushing the breakup. Yeah. I'd already. like to see this faction with Marty Bell hang around a little while longer. They announced that all this is taken on Flip. Um, your boy. You love the Pope. The Pope's in the building. I love the Pope. He's very cool. With the yeah. uh, Outlaws Inc. Do you the, Homicide Hernandez? Not a not a no. That's not a Kingston yeah. And Homicide. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. They'll fill. Yeah. Pope, I could see doing some good things. Yeah. Pope could be another one of those open slot guys. He's not that's contracted. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Stevens question mark against Outlaw Inc. You know, question mark gets to win. Yeah. What can you say, man? Um. This joke is just... It's taken on a life of its own. It's like the reset button. Literally. Yeah. The question mark and Shooter Stevens are so much fun to watch. He is uh, a third degree national heavyweight champion. And a third degree black belt in less than a month and a half. Yeah. In karate. The Mongrovian style of it. Yeah. I I thought we were going to get the national anthem. When the flag bearer, now they got a flag bearer. Too much fun. Yeah. Old Too school. much fun. And then we have the main event, Strictly Business against Team Morton. Um, Team Morton, Tim Storm and Eli Drake and Robert Gibson. Securing the victory. Ricky Morton's going to get a heavyweight title shot at some point. Does uh, Big Papa Pump hang around? Was this a one-off deal? What do you think? I hope he leaves. Was never a fan. 
No. He's never a fan. I, I like the Steiner brothers in their early days. They said the same thing. With his with his glorious mullet. That Scott Steiner oh, mullet. mullets back. Yep. But I was never a fan of Big Papa Pump. I didn't like him in the NWO. and Nothing against him. Just I like the other guys better. Him. Yeah. Chad Howard. Well, he screwed him over down at WrestleCade. Oh, really? You didn't hear? You, you didn't listen to that then either. He Chad was trying to get an autograph from both of them. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, oh, there was a promo too that I enjoyed with um, Boom Boom and Ken Anderson. Oh, go ahead. I, yeah, I, no, I, 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 I like that. Um, you that a love Cole Cabana. I love Cole Cabana. Yeah, I really do. And I like that there was a little bit of friction there. But that you've got one side saying we need to work on things, and then you've got Ken Anderson saying we don't need to work on anything. Everything seems fine to me. I love the disqualification when uh, Ken Anderson grabbed a hold of the referee and they immediately, you know, he threw the match out. Um, I like what's happening between those guys. And I'd like to see them continue to team. I'd like to see them work through these problems. Okay. Yeah, you like Eli Drake, though, too. I do. And I've told you I want to see eventually Colt Cabana and Eli Drake and you said they're they're too individual yeah, to be I think a team. Too, I think they are. But then what did I throw at you? Dusty and Magnum, great yeah. individuals. But when you put them together, they were special. Dusty and Nikita, same deal. Especially Dusty and Nikita. Yeah, yeah especially Dusty and yeah. Nikita. Yeah. I'd love to see Colt Cabana and Eli Drake form a team at some point. All right, let's touch on WWE as a whole. Okay. Some things that stood out to me. <laughs> that was my touching on it, by the way. That was your touching on it. Some things that stood out to me, they had two opportunities for Charlotte Flair against Sarah Logan in consecutive weeks and blew it both times. The one week, the match never started, which is okay. You can have that once in a while. That's a nice tease. But it was chaotic. You didn't know what the hell was going on. The commentary team didn't know what was happening. It was dumb. And then Charlotte just walks away, but she didn't really prove anything. So they give him a shot the following week, obviously. Charlotte's going to go over with the figure eight. I get it. Are, are we back to the time of Nikki DNA. Bella doing DNA. something pretty yep. and getting a 30-second win? Sarah Logan's too talented for this. Charlotte is Charlotte. Can you give these ladies 10 minutes without nonsense? And, and then another woman's match, you have Alexa Bliss against... Um, this is on SmackDown now. This is on SmackDown. I'm all over the place because I'm, I'm pissed off what they're you doing are. with the women's divisions. Y- you've got... The best women's division right now is in NWA. Yes, I agree. Uh, despite all that talent in WWE. Uh, you got Alexa Bliss against one half of Fire and Desire. Uh, Sonya Deville. Sonya Deville. How can you... You never... She's re- like my favorite. I can't remember right, her name. You're either the hair lady, the square up lady. You never remember her name. Why? Because they're, all they do is bury her. Uh, yeah. All they do is bury this woman with incredible talent and charisma. She could be a game changer in AEW or NWA. Agreed. She does not deserve what they're doing to her. You know, they all, many of them have to go, not just women, the men too. They go through these phases where, there was a point where the Miz was jobbing Garbage. weekly. Yeah. You know, and now they he's hate the Miz. That word, by the way. Right, I'm sorry. Okay, where he was losing weekly on on TV, and now he's superstar, megastar, and maybe that's in the in the stars for Sonya Deville. But fine, but give us a match. You got that all oh, that fat mashed potato outside the ring. Otis, Otis, Otis. Who he means. Otis. Otis. like an this idiot. Is I'm glad you don't have a segment for the English pontification this week. This is even better. This is you being pissed. Go ahead. I can't stand that guy. I can't stand that team. It distracted from the match. You know, y- you have extras in in theater. Their job is not to act like buffoons. Their job is to just pay attention to what's going on so that we as fans and an audience pay attention to what's going on. This guy's got like a nervous tick and a bushwhacker arms. It's so stupid. And what happens? Sonya Deville gets rolled up. And Mandy Rose falls in. He, the part of the whole thing of him being out there was to catch Mandy Rose so she slowly, slowly, slowly <laughs> falls in love with him. And that's what's happening. That's the story, John. Elizabeth 
sympathized with George the Animal Steel, but she was with the Macho Man. If she hadn't been with the Macho Man, would she no. really have seen anything in George the Animal Steel? I sympathize for your wife. Right. But you don't see what she sees in me. Right. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> what on earth can Mandy Rose see in this guy that we're supposed to believe she's fallen for him? You know, steaks and wings, baby, steaks and wings. She likes, she likes steaks and she likes to be pumped. Lana is... Ah, uh, this is even worse. Well, no, I'd rather saying, watch the Otis one than this one. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just saying Lana's married to a big, strong, good-looking guy. They get divorced, whatever. She hooks up with another really big, strong, good-looking guy. Okay. On what planet... <laughs> Is Mandy Rose attracted to Otis? I don't know. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I don't I don't know. Um a highlight for me though, I enjoyed um Robert Rude um against Roman Reigns. Um you had King Corbin coming out and distracting him. You had Dolph Ziggler, who I think is uh, criminally underutilized, come out and attack Roman Reigns. It was a tables match. There was no DQ. And you had the Usos coming out. My son and I love the fact that uh, they're putting these guys together. Um, the Usos being Roman Reigns' cousins once removed is the technical term. Um, my One of my big bitches of the week was Becky and Asuka's contract signing. Um, both are better than a contract signing. Both are better than what happened there. Yeah, she gets sprayed in the face. I, fine and dandy. It, it was just not right. I, I don't know. It, it, it just didn't feel... There's too many contract signings anymore. First yeah, all, that's number they're overplayed. One. I don't want to see a contract signing for everything. Yeah. Sign the goddamn thing in the back, and yeah. it's good to go. And you know how it's going to end. They, right. They're not just going to sign and shake and hands. Walk away. And no. Give us like a UFC thing, too, where they have to be separated or they're Wait in each in. other's face. Wait in. Do something different. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I don't know. Um, that's. I didn't watch SmackDown, nor do I care. I didn't watch NXT. They got the lowdown from me. That's yeah, right. I got the lowdown from that that's it. Uh, so we're we're getting close on time. We'll uh, we'll wrap it up. Um, all in all, John, um, what do you want to see uh, this coming week? Three pay per views. We have NWA Hard Times Friday night. Guys, make sure you pay attention. We'll have a code. Will we, when you order NWA Hard Time, you'll get uh, ten dollars back um, to order more in time. So it's like a ten, free ten bucks. Uh, then you have Takeover on. Saturday night, and then the Rumble Sunday, which we'll get our podcast out uh, prior to the Rumble early again that we'll have our predictions next week for the Rumble. Um, Brock's number one. Do you see him going the whole way? Real quick. I do. Uh, I see him going the whole way. I don't know if he wins. I think he uh, is eliminated at the very end by whomever number 30 is. Drew McIntyre. You think so? That's what's... Yeah. Him or Kane Velasquez? God. <sighs> I hope not. It's going to be a stupid match. Yeah. Uh, if, if it's Drew, I'm all right with it. Yeah. If it's Kane Velasquez, I'm hating it. Yeah. Um, taking a little bit of time off from going to wrestling, as uh, our next scheduled event is IWC again in February. We have some, I have some uh, private family things to be taken care of over the next week. Nothing bad. It's family's book stuff that I should probably attend. So, cannot go to any wrestling. You, I'll probably join you at IWC. Um, we didn't love Reloaded, but we're going back. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah always. We'll always be back. Always. And then uh, our big thing is, big event in March. We'll be going there to New York City, but uh, we'll touch on that more down the line. Any, you got any random thoughts? Anything across the board? I bitched a lot. I was pretty whiny. I can... Kind of hear my own voice. I was really whiny on this episode. You were whiny. Yeah. You were you were bitchy. Uh, not a great week in wrestling, but a week in wrestling. Yeah. NWA and AEW were good as always. They're, they're entertaining. They're fun. You, you leave those shows feeling like you watched your favorite shows that week. You tuned into your characters and, and your stories. Um... Uh, WWE, it, it's just so convoluted and hard to follow, and yeah. 
Any te- do you a teaser now, John? I'm teasing, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, about the huge interview that we have for Wednesday. It's unbelievable, by the way. It's really great, you guys. A tease. Um, if you love, this is very generic. If you love pro wrestling, listen to the next spotlight coming up. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. All right, John. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, Mark. Not a garbage cannot. <laughs>